And if they do manage to put together a manifesto like this, it, I mean, it, 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 it'll either be tightly controlled, in which case all the sort of their more fringe candidates will fight against it and resign and storm out and start punching each other in the European Parliament and all the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, not that they're there anymore, but the equivalent these days. Um, or they'll do it by some sort of crazy consensus and it'll be bonkers. I mean, you, 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 it's this fiction that you can sort of insert a new political party into the system and it will function with all the competence. And I, I appreciate that's a relative term, but all the competence of the ones that already exist, it just won't. It it will be chaos. A compliment, don't worry. Uh, what do you make of reform? Because um, the Tories have massive, massive problems, even if you don't think about reform. But when you say that reform could take 10, 12, 13, 14% of traditional Tory voters, that becomes a really significant further problem for them. Do you think, or do you think it's these, like, these are soft numbers for them? No, it's absolutely a problem for them. But that's that's all of what it is. I thought it was very interesting, Alex Phillips trying to sort of fight against the narrative that the whole point of the whole point of reform UK is to damage conservative chances. That's all it's going to do. You know, there's, I mean, there's no prospect of them winning any MPs. I wouldn't have thought the big problem they're going to have, though, which parties like this always have. Reform UK is talking about putting up, perhaps putting up candidates in every seat. Who are they going to be? There's this sort of like vague humming belief, oh, they'll all be basically Richard Tice or Nigel Farage. They won't. There'll be a lot of maniacs. Yeah. And I don't say that in a particularly pejorative sense because there always are. When the Brexit party tried, tried to stand everywhere, when UKIP decided to spread out and stand, stand everywhere, it brought in an awful lot of people who were often from the sort of right-wing fringes of politics. They had very, very crazy views. They were easy pickings for their political opponents because they all posted crazy stuff about bringing back hanging or about yeah. Islam or about whatever else, you know, for, for, for years and years and years on every forum they could find. This will happen again. Uh, that won't stop them from taking the sort of 10 to whatever percent of the vote that will really, really damage the Conservatives. I just, uh, as ever with this particular sort of political fringe, I just don't really know what they're after because um, everything they do hampers the the chances of the bits of our politics that they like more and, and, and helps the chances of the bits they like less and what they really get out of it. The idea of somebody from, from Reform UK or whatever it's called now blaming other people for the chaos of our politics for the last 10 years is just kind of preposterous. Well, also, I said to Alex, Alex Phillips, said, oh, we've got some quite left-wing policies. And I said, well, do you want to name one? And then she said, oh, we might consider nationalising some energy companies. And then, and then actually, I better not say any further because we haven't written a manifesto. And that's the problem, because if you come together as a sort of anti-establishment-ish, anti-immigration conglomerate... You've then got to have policies about all sorts of other things. And getting everyone to agree on that, presumably, is quite tricky. Yes, exactly. I mean, I think it, I from which election it was, I think it was the 20, 20, 2015 election, the Green Party's manifesto was one of the maddest documents I've ever read because it had been put together by sort of by, by committee and was suddenly sort of thrust thrust into the limelight. And if they do manage to put together a manifesto like this, it, I mean, it, 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 it'll either be tightly controlled, in which case all the sort of their more fringe candidates will fight against it and resign and storm out and start punching each other in the European Parliament and all the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, not that they're there anymore, but the equivalent these days. Um, or they'll do it by some sort of crazy consensus and it'll be bonkers i mean you, you you it's this fiction that you can sort of insert a new political party into the system and it will function with all the competence and i, I appreciate that's a relative term but all the competence of the ones that already exist it just won't it will be chaos uh, edwin if you were advising which you said would you be worried about reform though because they may not do anything for themselves but by just existing they could could make a, a bad problem worse for, for the conservatives trying to win votes in marginal seats well, they're not a new threat. Uh, I mean, it's a new name. It was launched, what, three years ago? Um, but something like that, fringe parties on the right of the Tories have always been around. Uh, and um, certainly in 2019, we saw them off pretty effectively. Will they drain some votes from Conservatives? Yes, probably. Is there a shortage of candidates? No. Um, Hugo is absolutely right. There are enough lunatics out there, absolutely bonkers, to be quite entertaining and exasperating people when it comes to the election. And it, in many seats, they'll take maybe about 10%. Uh, in, in many ways, that's not the Tories' problem. The Tories' problem is losing votes to Labour uh, or Labour winning seats from the SNP in Scotland and therefore uh, having enough uh, to form a government, which hasn't been a possibility for them for some time. Uh, I mean, you saw, the, the Tories saw them off in 2019 by doing a deal with them. They basically said, don't stand. And because they wanted Brexit so badly and they thought Johnson would deliver it, they didn't stand. That's how the Tories dealt with the problem. Yeah. I guess the problem is if, if they stand in 200 places and they take 10% off in every seat, Tories are always struggling. I mean, this, that's not, this is not good news for the Tories, is it? Yeah, well, in the, 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 you put your finger on it a, a little bit earlier, which is that actually back in 2019, they had a policy. 
Mm. And they'd had a policy which had been in existence for a very long time, which was to get Brexit done. Uh, once the Conservatives adopted that policy with real energy and enthusiasm, uh, then it was possible to kind of fall in behind the Conservatives and the result was a, a resounding victory. This time they don't have any policies. I mean, nationalising uh, the energy companies, uh, which I heard a few moments ago, is a socialist policy. Yeah. That's the sort of thing you might hear from Jeremy Corbyn, uh, not from anybody to the right of the Conservatives. So it's a much more wishy-washy um, protest vote uh, in, uh, these days. I have a feeling there's a failure behind all this. I think Nigel Farage, when he went into the jungle, into I'm a Celebrity, was hoping that he was going to win it and that uh, 10 million people would watch and they'd be thrilled with him and he'd then be able to get adopted as a Tory candidate and eventually become the prime minister. And this did not happen, any of it. There were too many hurdles there, uh, and he wasn't able to uh, achieve that um, wonderful breakthrough hurdle over all the problems. Uh, it, it, in the end, actually, the percentage that something like reform is going to get uh, will be, I think, much the same as, it's, as re these fringe parties always yeah, get. Okay. And it may well be that some of the people who vote for them wouldn't otherwise be voting anyway. I think one of the things that's going to be... A problematic issue during this come, forthcoming general election this year is going to be turnout. If we can get people keen, enthusiastic, however weary they are of politics, yeah. uh, then I think uh, we have a good chance. That's an interesting point. I think turnout, I've, I've heard many people suggest, may be quite low as in the current predictions for it, but we shall see what happens.